Hi, this is the bad boy, Joey Janela, and you're listening to the Going In Raw podcast. Joey Janela always goes in. This is the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, and you are listening to Going In Raw. Hey everyone, Kenny Omega here. In case you didn't know, we have an awesome kick butt show called Stephen Larson's Going In Raw, and they're going to be supporting AEW every week amongst many other things. Goodbye and smooch. Good night. Bye bang. Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Lars. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Available wherever podcasts can be found, and of course, taped live at the Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Steve and Larson this Sunday. Uh, what many are saying will be the greatest pay per view in the history Definitely of mankind. Most anticipated Survivor Series 2021. Oh boy! Wow! Can't wait for this one. We're going to be doing our live reactions to it, uh, and uh, if, if nothing else, you get to hang out with three dudes watching some wrestling. That's always a good time. If it's good wrestling, bad wrestling, even if it's boring wrestling, we'll find a way to uh, shoot the shit. And make the time pass uh, certainly better than just watching it by your lonesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that? uh, so that's it. Was my my mom is FaceTiming my child, Aww. but my child has my other phone. Gotcha. Goes, but, but my iPad's back there too, so they all blow up at the same time. Yeah. Hopefully, it's not going to be a thing. Anyways, uh, so yeah, there there you go. Some sports entertainment for you on Sunday. We're going to be doing that. Are we doing it on YouTube or Twitch? Can we just do it on Twitch? All those. I don't want any more swastikas on my on my YouTube channel, man. It was terrible. Yeah, it Anyways, was terrible. We could, that's, a, that's a conversation between me and you um, that we should probably have at yeah. some point. Yeah, we should. We Anyways, should. we should. Uh, so that's going down. Figure we'll We'll figure out where we're going to do that. And then, uh, yeah, uh, AEW Dynamite. It's a good show. Do we have any was, news before that? No, Dynamite was a strong show. Notes. It was a hell of a show. It was a, it was yeah. a very enjoyable show. Uh, we saw, you know, I'm not going to read too much into it. I, I, I know they, they want a, a good, strong first opponent for Hangman Page. But gosh darn it, I love seeing, I'm not going to call him a heel. I mean, probably the title of this episode will be Daniel, Brian Danielson heel turn or something. I love mean Brian Danielson. He was mean tonight, and it was great. He uh, he seemed to absorb much. Maybe he is. Maybe he's become some a little bit of raw gate mutant, absorbing some of Minoru Suzuki into his fiber, into his DNA. And now I'm just gonna say it: the guy is a dick. All right, he shows up. Oh, congratulations, Hangman. I wish it were Kenny I was fighting. And then when Hangman stands up for himself, oh, now you got to be now I got to start talking about kicking effing heads off. We saw you say that bad word, Brian Danielson. Yeah, he did say We it. know who you are. We do. You can't mention WWE programming on this AEW channel. Actually, they certainly can. They I feel like they do it fairly often. He mentioned WrestleMania by name. When he title it WrestleMania. <laughs> he didn't They didn't let poor Bob Fish say uh undisputed. That might be a tr- well, yeah. I guess that's too close. Yeah, I don't know why. I guess yeah, it's funnier. It's funnier if he right doesn't there. say it, but teases. It, it is pretty. It that's is pretty why. funny. I love how much they're doing going with that. No, dude, I, I I loved. You could tell Brian Danielson is loving being mean. He's having so much more more fun being mean. Yeah, I think this is a great a great. You know, even even on being the elite when they showed Hangman going backstage. And everybody's congratulating him. And Brian Danielson comes up to him. Even then, there was that little bit of, and it's sort of like, yeah, that's great, but I won at WrestleMania. Yeah. I know. <laughs> you know? I mean, no, the thing that I liked about overall about this show was that I, I hope, God, I hope, Tony, if you're listening, TK, if I can call you that, keep it to a big four. Because all the shows after the big fours feel like, the way Raw after uh, WrestleMania mm-hmm, used to. Mm-hmm. Tonight had so much energy. There were new matchups. There were new things. Punk versus MJF. Uh, uh, of course, the 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 Brian Hangman stuff. New things were going on. Of course, the TBS tournament still happening. But even that is reinvigorated because they had to pause that for a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm sorry, I cut you off. You, you had one more. Oh, uh, I was just gonna let's bring up bring up uh, Brian Danielson. I guess maybe it was on on Sammy's latest vlog or something. Uh, I saw it on Twitter. 
where uh, you know he 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 pretty much is grumpy old man at this point, railing yeah. against kids doing their vlogs rather than changing the world, which is what the hope was, at least in his mind, that the, the this generation the, the, you know uh, uh, would would lead about some significant change in the world. And he says all they're worried about is their vlogs and grumpy, mean. Brian Danielson might be my favorite thing. Oh it's man, high up there. You can and you could you could even tell from the get go from the all out press conference or uh, media scrum, yeah, that he was like, "Hey, I'm here to cut to 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 cook. I'm here to kick fucking heads in." Mm-hmm. And this is finally that moment where it's like, "Oh man, now I get to finally do that." He's going to go through every member of the Dark Order. Until January, whatever, six. When they do six. the first six, is it sixth? Okay, I believe it's the six. first. Uh, the first T and uh, TBS episode of Dynamite. Sorry, fifth January fifth, and and that's what's going to happen. I mean, I don't know how many weeks are between now and then. Well, like six weeks between now and then, something like that. Seven weeks. How many members of the Dark Order are there? Six more. You know, like it lines up pretty perfectly. Yeah, no. Um. So yeah, this is uh this is gonna I love it. This is awesome. It feels natural for him. Yes. Uh, it feels like something he wants to do and he enjoys doing. Uh, and he loves messing with the crowd. Of course, Virginia. What did he say, Virginia? Of course, Virginia boos hard work. Of course, Virginia would <laughs> boo hard work. There's so oh that was rough. So many good little <laughs> subtle. Subtle lines in there, and oh. he always has that little shit grin on his I face know. too. It's great. I like that he's like, uh, says to Paige because Paige says like, "Hey, I I I I beat Kenny Omega. I didn't last thirty minutes." And Brian's like, "All right, I didn't come here to start beef, but you're not gonna be wrestling someone who's dressed like a Ghostbuster." Yeah, <laughs> all these yeah. little jabs. I love it. Mm-hmm. Love it. Yeah. Uh, so there was I surprisingly uh, for for one moment. I wonder if this is probably this is I think this is probably filmed uh, after um, full gear. The uh, the bit with the uh, the elite with uh, Kenny. Mm. He made uh, an appearance. It seemed from his words seemed to be the last time we're going to see him for a while. Yes. I mean, we had heard that he's going to be medically evaluated coming up. Uh, yeah. I think today yeah. that was supposed to be the day. Um, and, uh, you know, he basically congratulated hangman said, Hey, you won fair and square, but I got to go away. I, he, he said, I can't, I gotta, I gotta figure some things out and I can't do it here, Mm -hmm. which hopefully he, he does it while he's resting up and he just doesn't go to new Japan and start working (laughs) those matches again. Um, unless he finds himself medically fit to do so but uh but yeah i don't know i'm, I'm kind of curious where he's gonna pop up next and of course the the seeds were planted for you know hey can you guys hold it down yeah i got this cleaner <laughs> hey so i'm not talking about you I'm talking about the young oh my the, i got this cleaner line killed oh, me that was so good i got this. that's the best tweet of all time oh that's so i got good. this cleaner that's so good yeah that's funny they reference that and he's and then Oh man, the humiliation that Adam Cole had to feel in that moment when Kenny said, mm-hmm. "I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the young bucks." And everybody's like, "Oh yeah." That's fine. <laughs> and Matt just tried to be peacemaker. Says, "Oh, we'll all hold it down while you're gone. It's fine. Yeah, we got yeah. it." Yeah, no, that was that was really good stuff. And then of course uh, we had uh, the start of MJF versus CM Punk, something everybody's been wanting to see. And it started off with just the the most simple amount of disrespect. MJF sticks his hand out, says, hi, I'm Max. And Punk just laughs at him condescendingly, turns his back on him and leaves yep, and yep. chuckles the whole way out. It's a pretty nice kind of reverse of what we saw at full gear where after his match against Eddie Kingston, Punk extended his hand and Kingston was the one that walked out, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I like it, man. It's it's It seems like we're firmly past I'm happy to be here, Punk. Mm-hmm. Everybody just gets to land where they are as characters. It's not like anybody. I mean, obviously, MJF is a bad guy. We get that. But there are so many characters who they could just sort of be whatever they are, you know, mm-hmm. and then they, 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 you just let the fans figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they were booing the crap out of Brian tonight, and yeah. he was eating it up. Yeah. And in, any, in, in another situation, maybe they'd be cheering him. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, it was, um, it was really good. I mean, I mean, they, the, the crowd really turned, really turned on Danielson. Once he said WrestleMania, once that word came out of his mouth, the crowd dumped on him. 
and he said that with such glee. Mm-hmm. He said right, it was almost akin to Trevor Lee uh, uh, being announced as Impact Superstar, TNA superstar Trevor, Trevor, Trevor yeah. Lee. Yeah. Oh, that was so good. He said, when I won the title at WrestleMania, I wrestled the next day. Oh, it was so good. That was so, so good. It was amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, so good. All right, let's take a quick break here to get a word in from our sponsor, Decked. So, Larson. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard this story before, man. You got like a truck-owning friendo out there who goes to check out a football game or something at a buddy's house. And then, man, they completely forget about all the stuff they left at the bed of their truck. So, when they go back to their truck, they discover... That while they were at their friend's house, the heavens had opened up and dropped rain or snow or whatever and completely ruined everything they left in their truck bed. Yeah, I've heard stories like that. Next time I do, I'm going to tell that friendo about Decked. The Decked drawer system is weatherproof, which means it'll keep your stuff safe from rain, ice, and snow. Also, the Decked drawer system makes organizing and accessing everything in your truck bed so much easier. Yeah, and each of Deck's two full bed length drawers can carry up to 200 pounds of whatever you want to put in them. And the drawers roll out about waist high, giving you easy access to your tools and gear. Plus, Deck is 100% made in the USA and backed by a lifetime no hassle warranty and offers second to none customer service. Getting decked is the best thing friendos out there could do for their truck, especially this time of year. Protect your stuff, get your deck drawer system at deck.com slash raw and get free shipping. That's decked.com slash raw for free shipping on your decked drawer system. Decked.com slash raw. Well, let's jump right into it. Show opened up with uh, the Super Elite promo. As we mentioned, uh, Kenny says, I haven't watched back the full gear match yet, but people are already asking, Kenny, cl- cleaner, when do you get your rematch? When do you get your title match? Title match, back, sorry. And he says, I lost the match. The Elite lost the night. I'm disgusted, but not with you, Hangman. Congratulations. I meet it. He says, but there are things I need to fix, things I need to change, and I can't do it here. So if I count on you to hold down the fort while I'm gone, I'd appreciate it. And Adam Cole says, don't worry, worry cleaner. cleaner. I got this. And Kenny (laughs) says, oh, I wasn't talking about you. I was was talking about the Young Bucks. And there's a little bit of bickering. Uh, Matt says, well, I'll hold it down while you're gone. After that, it's officially Cowboy Shit Day. Yeah, National Uh, Cowboy Shit Day. the, the, uh, The National Cowboy Shit Day. The Dark Order uh, hanging out in the ring, waiting for a hanger to come out. He's got a Virginia's for lover shirt, of course. He's uh, in his homeland. Mm-hmm. And the uh, crowd starts chanting, you deserve it. And he says, I didn't deserve it. I effing earned it. So they're like, okay, fine. You earned it. You, you earned, earned it. it. He's trying to be nice over here. And he says, uh, I'm still just a man with a job and a boss to answer to. And I told all you at that first pre- press conference that that boss was you. So if my boss will allow it, I'll stay in this ring and celebrate National Cowboy Shit Day. He mentions uh, the American Dragon, and out comes said American Dragon. Yeah, and uh, American Dragon says, I can't say one thing. Congratulations, Hangman Adam Page. He says, I'm not going to lie. I'm super excited for this match for the AEW title, but to be fair, I'm a little surprised and disappointed. It's not Kenny Omega standing across the Boo. ring for me. And Page says, well, that's because I beat Kenny's ass at full gear and managed to do it in less than 30 minutes, of course. Daniels and Omega wrestle to a 30-minute time limit draw. And Brian uh, says, I'm not here to start beef. Although, to be fair, Paige isn't going to be wrestling someone who dressed as a Ghostbuster. I'm going to kick some ass. Says, apparently, cowboy shit doesn't involve wrestling. Daniel Bryan says, look at the schedule I've had since coming here. I wrestle every week. You just talk. And that's when uh, Brian says, uh, after I won the title at WrestleMania 30, <laughs> I wrestled the next day, and the crowd is just booing the heck out of him. Oh, of course, Virginia boos hard work. <sighs> so and uh, Hangman says, uh, okay, fine. How about tonight? And Brian says, he says, yeah, do you guys here in Virginia, in Norfolk, want to see that? And they're all up for it. They're all geeked out for it. And he says, normally I'd be up for it. I'm out here to wrestle. I got my gear on. You've got cowboy boots on, jeans, and a horrible leather jacket. When I got here, everyone told me that you had a long list of excuses while you failed throughout your career. I don't want to beat you, and you'll have an excuse for why you're not ready. Hey, man, says, fine, we won't have the night to, the match tonight. I know Virginia's for lovers, but I'll still fight. They start going at it. They get pulled apart by the Dark Order. Uh, uh, Brian's like, uh, they won't let them. Of course, they're not going to let us fight. And then he charges after Brian. Uh, and then we get uh, Brian Danielson versus Evil Uno. Brian Danielson kicked the shit out of Evil Uno. 
He beat it him. It was up. brutal. He this was like him Miro, up. man. This was great. Yeah, this was this was uh this was just another Brian Danielson. Yeah, I've not was, seen it was. this. I, the last time I saw this was that clip of him beating on that indie guy from like twenty years For ago. Not selling, yeah. Um, so Uno chops uh, Danielson, and that seems to like really set him off. So he slaps basically the taste out of Uno's mouth, hits him with a bunch of stiff shots, is pummeling him with kicks in the corner. Uh, and then you know they have kind of like a, a face to face. Uno's like, "Come on, hit me! Come on, hit me!" Mm-hmm. So uh, Brian. Uh, kind of pie faces him a couple times. Uno slaps him. And then Udo. Udo was dishing it out, too. I don't make it seem like it was a one-sided affair uh, completely. Udo was dishing it out. He dished out a bunch of stiff-looking forearms and chops in the corner. Trying to, he was trying to hang with him, yeah. 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 Um, so at one point, Udo's looking for a spinning form. Dan, uh, Brian Danielson hits him with one of those drops him like a sack of mm-hmm. rocks. Hits mm-hmm. him with a pair of corner drop kicks, looks for another. Instead, Udo responds with a boot. Udo's looking for a swanton. Danielson gets his knees up, hits a knee plus, Yells that Uno is about to get his fucking head kicked in. And they were on full close-up, yeah. and one of the mics kind of nearby picked it up in the ambient noise, and it was just a fat close-up. I'm going to kick his fucking head in. Here it clear <laughs> it was amazing. And so he, oh, was great. he gets a bunch of Danielson stomps, put him in the triangle. Uno passes out immediately. And so he doesn't let go of the hold. He's still got Uno in the triangle. He's laying on the mat. And he's flexing on Uno. Yeah. And then yeah. eventually he releases. So Shivani hits the ring to interview Danielson. Danielson says, I came out there just to congratulate Paige, but because of his behavior, I <laughs> had to kick in evil Uno's head. So guess what? Uh, until I fight Adam Page for the AEW title, I'm going to take on every member of the Dark Order and kick their heads in. Next week, we're in Chicago. I hear there's a Dark Order member who's from Chicago. So Colt Cabana, if you've got any nuts... I'm going to kick your head in next week. Woo. Week great. after week after week after great. week. Yeah, this this was really great stuff. Uh, after that, they cut to some footage, a post-match promo from MJF from Full Gear, and he looks at himself, and he's got some of Darby's uh, face paint on. He says, look what I'm on. Or he says, look what I'm covered in. I know you think this is Darby's face paint, but it's really his shame. I keep hearing about how great all these other names are uh, as professional wrestlers. Oh, MJF is only good on the stick. He's not good bell to bell. Well, you see this. I don't know what's going on in this knee, but I don't care because tonight I proved all you wrong. Darby, I just beat you with a headlock takeover, and right now I'm ready to go to Norfolk, Virginia. Who knows what's next for MJF? It's good stuff. Uh, yeah. Then we get an Eddie Kingston interview. Oh, this was great. Or so we thought. Instead, 2.0 and Daniel Garcia step in. Uh, 2.0 is like, hey, how you doing? You complain again about how you lost. It's always a sad story with you, Eddie. Um, and you also didn't last as long in the ring as Garcia did against Punk. And so Eddie gets in Garcia's face. And he said, you let two grown men call you his son? I don't respect <laughs> that. I don't respect you for that. And then challenges Garcia to a match. Yeah. And so they kind of trade bar uh, uh, insults back and forth. They leave, and King just goes, just one time, one time. No one will interrupt me by promo. I'm going to catering. I beg you, God. I beg you. One promo without interruption. I'm going to catering. Oh, so good. Oh, it was awesome. Uh, after that, we had Orange Cassidy and Tomohiro Ishii from New Japan Pro Wrestling, of course, both Chaos members, mm-hmm. uh, versus The Butcher and The Blade. Uh, this is wildly fun. It's always interesting, just from a production standpoint, to see uh, other promotions, other promotions wrestlers film the way sort of a you know, North American production would do it, as opposed to how they do it in New Japan, which is a little bit different, a bit more sports oriented. Um, but uh, so it was great to see Ishii uh, 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 film that way, mm-hmm. and we got all the standard uh, uh, Ishii tropes, you know, all you know, no selling, stiff shots. Uh, uh, just being a boulder of a human being. We saw, we saw, and, we saw a trance uh, Ishii too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, that was good. Uh, so he got the uh, brain buster on, I believe, the butcher. Is that correct? Or was uh, the blade? Blade. Was it blade? Blade. Okay. Yeah, thought, it was okay. blade. Yeah, he okay. gets with the clothesline and then and the brain buster to get the win. Really fun mm-hmm. bout though. Um, after that, mm-hmm. Shivani's interviewing Andrade and FTR. Andrade is kind of roughing up his assistant a little bit. Uh, to start and tells Cody that uh, he's already proven that he's a better wrestler, but now he's going to show him his bad side. Uh, Cash Wheeler says, hey, I wasn't the legal man their match, therefore we were robbed. It suggests an eight-man tag match for next week, which would be FTR, Andrade, and Malachi versus Cody Pack and the Lucha Brothers. And then Tully says, if Arn, 
You want to stick your nose in the our business again? I got one more in me. Ooh, and they say he's got big huevos. Mm-hmm. You know what huevos are, Larson? No, they're balls. Or balls. Well, they're eggs, but it's the that's their way of saying balls. Big balls. Yeah. 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 Uh, anyways, after that, we had a Ty Conti video promo, uh, and she basically says, "Next time I'm in that situation, I'm going to come out of it champion." She. It's not about wins and losses. It's about wins and learn. Said I didn't fail against Brit. I learned. I learned against Brit. Speaking of Brit, she had an interview afterwards. She said, "I'm getting a little exhausted carrying this division." So I'm going to direct the spotlight over to Jamie Hayter. And uh, 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 Tony brings up Thunder Rosa. She's like, whoa, we don't say that name around here, Tony. He's like, sorry. And uh, she says, Thunder Rosa, your name is on the way to becoming irrelevant after Jamie beats you on the way to championship gold. Speaking of which, more TBS tournament action. Man, was Nyla match. Rose versus Carl Sheeta. This was a wildly fun Yeah, match. it was really fun. It was really fun. Uh, Nyla, of course, targeting Sheeta's knee. The one that targeted. Serena Deeb had already busted up. Uh, at one point, uh, uh, there's a table set up uh, ringside. Uh, where is that bit? It's lost here in my notes, but it's there. Oh, the chair bit? Chair bit. That's what I was thinking. Sorry, chair. So Yeah, uh, so she sets up Sheeta in a chair. Well, chair, and then Sheeta she, sets up the chair to do the running knee off of. Yeah. And then yeah, she, yeah. Nyla Rose sets up Sheeta. I don't know why I thought it was a table. And then uh, there was a table spot later. The Sammy J Lethal match had a table. Yeah, that had a table spot. Uh, so, uh, so this was this was, I think it was much worse than a table. Yeah, it looked worse. Because God, that damn, chair. Nyla Rose did like a uh, flipping senton. Yeah, a swan. Tie. Right on, right on to uh, the chair. Yeah. No Sheeta. Sheeta got out of the way. Yeah. It was gnarly. Yeah. Uh, then Sheeta uh, or Vicky tries to hit Sheeta with the kendo stick. Instead, Sheeta takes it from her, uh, hits her with it. Um, and then, uh, uh, later on, uh, Sheeta goes up top, Rose launches her off, uh, Sheeta later low bridges Nyla out of the ring, sends her into the barricade and they hit the cross body of the second rope. And so she puts Nyla in the ring is about to follow Serena D runs in chop mm. blocks her. Mm. Uh, after that, Sheeta hits that draping D off the top. They get to her two. Nyla's looking for a beast bomb. Sheeta fights out of that locks on a triangle. Nyla powers her up for a power bomb. And then hits a senton on the Sheeta's leg, goes another off the second rope, misses that. Sheeta rolls her up, gets a two. And then uh, Sheeta's going for a, a spinning knee. Nyla catches it right into a stretch muffler Ooh, on yeah. the bad leg, yeah. and Sheeta has to tap. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Uh, after that, we had Malachi Black. The definition of a nightmare is just having a bad dream. <laughs> I know that, Malachi. Thanks. He says, in Chicago, the four of us are going to haunt the four of you, and I will make it so the air you breathe. I love that he's basically just turning into like the living embodiment of disease because he starts talking about how the air you're going to breathe is going to be toxic Mm -hmm. as you gasp for it. You're going to realize what small part you'll play in the massive equation in front of you. (coughs) He says, so until then, take deep breaths while oxygen is still on your side. Yeah. That was good. It was really good stuff. And I love that it's because it's like mutating his face. I know. And stuff. Every week is different. You know, it's not the same. He thing. needs to have like some like pustules, you. <laughs> like leaking pus. Well, you from want his you face. want him to be like a, a 10 pounds of flesh competitor from from world. Exactly video game correct. Wrestling. Exactly correct. Uh, so after that, we did MGF promo. Uh, he gets the ring, hands Sean Spears the mic. And Sean Spears says MGF would, would appreciate it if the crowd would be silent this time. Of course, the crowd just boos louder. Hands the mic back back to MJF. Um, he says, "I know everything's about to go over your head, but I." He says, "I check all the boxes. I'm the most complete r- pro wrestler on the planet, and he is the man who will start a bidding war in the year 2024. He is the past, the present, and the future of pro wrestling. And moreover, if he wanted to, he could take their hometown horse and take him to the glue factory. Yeah. He could take a cowboy shit on his title reign." And he says, the "Power rankings don't tell you the truth." Says I, he says, I deserve to be the next AEW world champion because nobody in the locker room is as good as him or good as me. Nobody in that locker room is on my level. And then he's interrupted by Phil. <laughs> CM Punk <laughs> walks <laughs> up. <laughs> and he walks to the ring and stands in front of MJF. We're like, yes, we're going to get this verbal showdown. It's going to be great. They just milk the moment. MJF mm-hmm. introduces himself, says, hello, I'm Max. Extends his hand. Punk just smiles at him, turns around and walks out. Oh, yeah, man condescending really love it it is and max just looks completely confused by that moment 
after that, we have a Darby interview. They're in some like the I don't know bowels of the arena or Boy whatever, or something all, like that. It's all lit blue, and uh, and he's like, Max, you didn't break me mentally. And I'm not taking any time off. I want the biggest and baddest AEW has to offer. So, like, I mean, literally one of the biggest is Billy Gunn. And the guy's like 60 years old. Yeah, still no. looks He's like 6'5", 280 pounds. He's a massive human being. Comes in. He's like, oh, you want a challenge? Fine. We'll do it. And then his little bratty kids talk shit, too. One of them makes the turtle reference. It's actually pretty funny. Uh, so, yeah. that and, and Darby just laughs and said, all right, bring it on. Screw it. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> gold gold steel x here in the chat says maybe malachi's gimmick is going to be the toxic waste guy from robo oh, there we go <laughs> don't touch me man <laughs> that'd be something else uh then we had a super click promo uh they all talk about how full gear was the worst night of their lives matt was complaining that uh jungle boy tried to kill him while his kids were watching and adam cole says nick he's not clear to compete matt he's not clear to compete uh, he says the elite, but the elite, more importantly, the super click will be stronger than ever. He says in two nights, it's going to be uh, jungle boy and Luchasaurus versus Adam Cole and a very good friend of mine, Bobby fish. So Bob fish, walks oh, in. one of his best friends, he says, yeah. yeah, he says enough is enough. Let's put an end to this drastic joke. And that's, and he's about, he's about to throw up the undisputed air. He's about to do it. <laughs> yeah. He said, and that is, is un- and he's like, no, 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 no. Matt says, we can't do that here, man. Yeah. And then Nick's like, just hit the red button. I love that. He's directing Cutler's. Good. Hit the red button. Stop recording. Hit the red button. Nick is Nick is great. God damn it. He's so good. He, he's he's a really good, like, low-key heel. Except when oh, he man. starts calling like a bird. Then it which, is great, even, which is great. <laughs> because cause, like, he's so he's so soft spoken. Yeah, I know. He, like even yeah. most of this stuff, really soft spoken. When he starts calling like a bird, then he's not low-key uh, a, a great heel. He's like a great heel. Nick's Nick has some oddly penetrating eyes mm-hmm. when he looks into the camera, but it only works when he's a heel. Otherwise, he just sort of fades into the background. When he's a good guy, he just sort of fades into the background. It almost seems like when he's a face, he doesn't like looking into the camera. Yeah, he's like Snoop Dogg in that first music video for uh, Nothing But a G Thing. He just didn't, or Deep Cover. He didn't, he, he, you could tell him, like, this dude is really shy. Now, of course, he's like on every game show and stuff. But mm-hmm. uh, no, Nick's sort of the same. It's funny. When he's a face, he just sort of looks, doesn't really look mm-hmm. towards the camera. Mm-hmm. But as a heel, maybe it's the thing, hey, I can put on this character and it's yeah. not me. You yeah. know, that's the crazy thing about pro wrestling. I know. I know. Uh, after that, we had a great tag match Leo Rush, Dante Martin versus the acclaimed. Man, Leo and Dante, what an inspired uh, pairing here. Oh my Such god. Such a great team. And I love I loved the urgency of that end uh, of the finish when Dante hits uh uh his uh, what did it was called that again? Uh, the nose dive. Uh, Yeah, the nose dive on uh, on uh, uh Anthony Bowens and then he starts getting he's like, "Leo, come on, come on, come on, come on, do it." It's like that chemistry right there. They're putting it you could see them putting it together in real time and it's so much fun to watch that. There's a great moment early in the match where Dante he been isolated forever. And he gets yeah, right. laid out and he's on the floor and and Leo goes on a run and has the advantage. He starts looking around. Dante. He calls mm-hmm. out for Dante. Dante. Dante yeah. trying to get his attention so he get back up in the corner. And later on he was kind of directing traffic. It was great. Great. No, there was that there was that one sequence where they all ended up laying each other out and the crowd just started going nuts for it. Mm-hmm. This match is just one of those. You got to see it to believe it yeah. because it was a beautiful, beautiful it really match. Really was. Really was. Uh, so anyways, after Leo and Dante get the win, Team Taz come out to the stage. Taz congratulates them on their win and tells Leo, hey, it's great. You're back at work. My condolences uh, for your loss. This is grandmother that passed, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he yeah. says, uh, you know, some folks are uncomfortable with, with, with me extending a contract to Dante while Leo was, you were gone. But Leo, you're a businessman. I'm a businessman. Everybody in Team Taz, we're all businessmen. It's nothing personal. It's just business. And he says, Dante has a golden opportunity, and they'll be patient. And Stark says, yes, we will. Uh, we were patient with Hobbs. And, hey, it was a year ago that he joined Team Taz. And, look, he's accomplished so much. So here's the deal, Dante. If you choose to go with Team Taz, it'll be the start of a Hall of Fame career or a real mediocre one. The choice is yours. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Wow. Uh, after that, we had a Lucha Friends promo. Uh, Christian, very proud of Jungle Boy's concerto. Jungle Boy saying, you both had a chance to end me last week. The scruff might be gone from my face, but the change hold in on, my heart. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What? 
You don't want to talk about Christian Thlein? Oh, I didn't even write it down. Go ahead. It was lame. I don't think it was lame. Don't bring a fish to a fist fight. That's terrible. That's like the most grandpa joke, dude. That's yeah, terrible. Yeah, that's a pretty decent grandpa joke. No, it's a terrible. No, man. It's a pretty decent grandpa joke. It's not a compliment. You can't, you can't, your, your, your dislike for Christian Cage runs so strong, you can't even appreciate a, a little bit of creativity. I, I don't care if Adam Cole himself said this. It, it's not a good joke. But I didn't want to bring, I didn't want to sit here and do what I'm doing now, so I just didn't mention well, it. You didn't have to. You didn't have to mention that. You asked me about it. Okay. <laughs> you just could have said, you just could have said, yeah, it was all right. <laughs> But that's not how I feel. I feel very passionately the other way. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Anyways. He says we're better now than we've ever been. A fish to a fist fight. Come on now. We're better than that, people. No, I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, and I, I thought it was funny because I knew immediately you'd probably not like it. Uh, after that, we had a Jade Cargill uh, Red Velvet video package uh, detailing their history. Uh, this match is going to be pretty good. I can't wait for this one. Okay, so let's before we get to the main event, let's stop there. Jade has got to win that TBS title, right? She's literally named it that bitch show. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's it. That's her title now. Yeah. It's just it's just hers. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, so Nyla goes there, and then uh, uh, Thunder Rosa. Thunder, I guess Thunder Rosa is going to lose to. Uh, no, no, Thunder Rose would have to then beat Thunder Rosa Jimmy would have to Hader, beat, No, yeah, and then, and then beat, beat Jade. Nyla Rose. No, beat Jade. It's Thunder and Jade in the same side of the bracket, and then it's it's Ruby, Statlander. Oh, that's right. And then Nyla's already advanced, so the winner of Ruby versus uh, Statlander would face Nyla. Oh, okay. Who wait? Who who's Jade's gonna fight? Uh, wait, who's gonna fight Jade then? What? Uh, Thunderosa. Assuming she beats JB Hater. Oh yeah, that's gonna happen. Maybe. Yeah, Jade. And regardless, Jade's winning that title in the end. I don't care who she's fighting. Yeah, yeah, she is totally, totally. <clears throat> uh, then we got a Lucha Brothers promo. Uh, Alex is talking about how FTR is complaining, crying about their loss, even though they cheated like a handful of times during the course of the match. Uh, Phoenix moves on, talking about the eight-man tag match next week. They got something special for their opponents because of the best four-man tag team in the world. And then uh, Penta punctuates it. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, well, after that was the main event, right? It was. Yeah. Stellar match, really good match between these two. Jay Lethal, Sammy Guevara for the TNT title. Uh, never really thought that this was going to go any other way than the way it did, but mm-hmm. it was a great showcase for what Jay Lethal brings to the They did a good job of putting your doubt in your mind that Sammy was going to make it out of the match, kind of just make it out of the match. Mm-hmm, you know, yeah. there's a couple instances where he, you know, they he 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 was going for a shooting star press. Lethal got his knees up, uh, and he was really selling the ribs. Rolled out of the ring, doctor checked on him. He went for a splash off the top to try to put Lethal through the timekeeper table. Lethal got out of the way. Sammy mm-hmm. ate all that. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, he bounced back from that quicker than he did the other spot. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and, and and I think it was Fightful Select was talking about how uh, the Briscoes. Were at yeah. Dynamite tonight. Ooh, yeah, I was expecting you know? to see them. Yeah. And I was thinking maybe at the main event they were having this be the main event because it may have an angle involving you know some sort of Ring of Honor invasion essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously didn't come to fruition. Uh, Sammy ended up hitting the, the beginning sequence of this match was great. They both mm-hmm. tease yeah. their respective finishes. They get a bunch of great roll ups, and the finishing sequence is ju- was just as good. Mm-hmm. Um, where Sammy's going for G- GTH. Jay escapes. Sammy hits with a bunch of running knees, tries for another GTH. Can't get him up because his ribs hit some more running knees and then eventually lifts him up for a GTH to get the win. Um, mm. Yeah, it was a really fun match. Really fun match. Yeah, it was good stuff. And afterwards, the inner circle comes down to celebrate with Sammy and then uh, Sammy and Jay shake hands. You know, I thought I thought especially inner circle, they're probably done with this America top team business. Mm-hmm. You know, have the Briscoes come in and we get Briscoes versus Santana Ortiz. Hell yes. Yeah, that'd be rad. That'd be awesome. I would love to see that. Um, yeah, no, that's a, that's a cool idea. That might be right. Yeah, Jay Lethal and the Briscoes. I mean, those are like super hardcore Ring of Honor guys, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, a couple of questions here on the Patreon of patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. The Yellow Flash says, should Hangman beat Brian clean? Yes, whenever they have that match, whatever happens, it should totally be clean. Yeah, I mean he's Hangman's the face, so it can't be any any hijinks. Can't cheat. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, Rao69SB with the sub. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jeffrey Collins says, do you see uh, more New Japan guest spots from the main event guys in AEW? I'd love to see. Okada's got to show up. That's happening. That shit is totally happening at some point. At some point, yeah. I was kind of hoping it would happen while he was in the States for the uh, the show in, in San Jose. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully at some point it happens. Yeah. Hopefully that will happen. Uh, Dean Fish says, now that we have our fourth AEW champion, who will be the first two-time AEW champion? Well, it's going to be Hangman. No, nah, they'd be on the box. I'd still say Hangman, though. Either Mox think, or Hangman. I think the, yeah, I mean, I mean, the question is, is Hangman going to lose it and get it back by the time Mox gets it again? Mm-hmm. It depends on just, it depends on the story they tell with Hangman. They might want to go in a different direction than just nine month, 12 month, 14 month title and whatever it's going to be. I they know. might want to stone cold it a little bit, you know, and that, you lose it in three well, months. I think, I think also the story there, you know, his story as far as has been getting the confidence to be champion. And mm-hmm. the one thing that separates him from all the other previous AEW champions is that he's never mm-hmm. held a world title before. I think he's only yeah, been right. tag champion. Maybe he was TV champion in Ring of Honor. He's never been yeah. world champion. He's never been the top guy. Yeah, That's a whole lot different than, than any other situation he's been in. So if they want to do the story of Hangman now learning how to be champion, hanging yeah. on to the belt after he's won it, then it might justify him dropping the belt sooner rather than later and winning it back. What would be the earliest they could do that without making him look too shitty? Without making the fans be like, wait, really? He can't hold on to it? I mean, he's going to, I guess it would be a matter of how many successful title defenses. Because Brian is a hell of a first test for him. I mean, that is like WrestleMania main event guy. Legitimately, multiple time WrestleMania main event guy. Um, I mean, here's the thing. And I, you just don't want the crowd to be like, oh, obviously. what? Really? Obviously. But I think it's a situation that has to be the right person, and the finish has to be one that protects Paige. Mm-hmm. Now, I think if, if, if a, a heel Daniel Bryan, after running through the Dark Order, has to cut corners, mm-hmm. rely on experience and veteran savvy because he has been in that position before, whereas Paige mm-hmm. has not, then it could work. And then you have to go, okay, you have to go to the next – whether it be pay-per-view or television cycle, where Paige has to learn, all right, now I have to get the experience under my belt to be champion to hold on to the title. I think that could be Yeah, something. but like him losing within moments of him winning it, I, that's not going to happen. Um, interesting we didn't see Miro tonight. Miro would be a pretty decent first guy. I mean, I'd love to see Miro be the next AEW champion, mm-hmm. but like, I, I wouldn't. you wouldn't want to see that until... I don't know. I feel like there's got to be at least two pay-per-views. Well, the thing is, them. though, if the story is Paige learning how to be ch- champion, I guess if you go too far into his title reign, he loses it, and then he's, if that's the story, then it seems kind of like, well, he's already defended the title four times. Yeah. You know, yeah. how much yeah, more no, learning does he have to I, do, you know? I get you. I mean, it's it's sort of a risk either way. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how that goes down. Uh, uh, let's see here. Jeffrey, oh, I'm sorry, uh, D- Dean Fit. No, oh, the Enforcer, the Enforcer. During the acclaimed uh, Dante Leo match, Jr. was talking about recruiting tactics, mm-hmm. and Tony said, "If I had a team, I'd try to recruit Dante Martin." And Excalibur laughingly said, "Team Tony." I recall, he says, "So for real, create a Team Tony Shivani faction AEW." Logan, uh, he says, "Love you guys, Logan Roy. Fuck off." Well, number one, Britt Baker. Yes. Uh, he said Dante Martin, so put Dante Martin in there. Good. Good. Sting. Okay. And Good. with Sting, I think probably comes Darby. Darby. Yeah. All right. So since it's Team Tony, I feel like everybody on the team has to be named Tony. So it's Tony Schiavone. Okay. It's Tony Nice. Tony Nice. Anthony Bowens. Anthony Bowens. Good. Uh, anybody else named Tony? <laughs> Will it would a Tom work? Tom's close to to Tony. Tommy is close to Tony. Tommy's pretty close. Tommy end. All right, Tommy end. Tom Budgen. Tom, Tom Budgen. All right, there you go. Tommy, Tony, Anthony. And Tony. Oh, and then of course the boss. 
Tony Khan. Tony Khan, yes. Oh, Anthony Agogo. Garaz here. There says Anthony we go. Agogo. Anthony Agogo, indeed. There you go. I wonder where he's going to come back. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Oh, oh, man. Moses Opposes asks, if WWE were to have someone with a cowboy gimmick, oh, what would it look like? It would probably be in NXT 2.0, and they'd have the lasso, all that. It would be Duke Hudson. Yeah, probably. It, that sounds like a cowboy name, it and it would does. be like this, the terrible. It would be the worst. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be the absolute worst Australian uh, dude. Bear Winning says this is Hangman's first singles title in a major promotion. He's only been tag and Ring of Honor trios champ. There you go. Yeah. Uh, oh, Sup John says Miro should open the forbidden door and go to New Japan to train his neck. Ugh. Oof. Ugh. That's, that's, you're playing with fire there, man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't Oof. know about that. Yeah, I don't know about that either. <laughs> That's scary. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Dr. Lipkin says, I was just looking to see if Christian has a cameo. He used to. He did. He yeah, says he did he, Dr. Point. Lipkin said he doesn't now. Hmm. He says, um, yeah, no, no, uh, no Christian cameo. What a bummer. Indeed. Yeah. He did for Anyways. a moment. What happened there? Uh, I don't know, man. Probably nobody was buying it, so he was like, "Well, this is a fucking waste of my time." Maybe, so I'm gonna... maybe. I was he, very had to, close. he had. Oh well, that's the thing. No, he had to bring it down in price to like fifteen bucks, and still nobody oh, was biting. Gosh. So he was like, "This is embarrassing." I'm a, not a Hall of Famer at all, but I had some success in WWE. Hall of Fame. Well, he had seven compared. years, and he wasn't in the Hall of Fame. So uh, I'm not sure what Miku, more he really Miku want. says, "Do you think we should get Team Chaos versus the Elite in Stadium Stampede? If not, what five on five match should it be?" Well, Stadium Stampede is like exclusively an inner circle thing, isn't it? They've even been both of them. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, wouldn't it be great if Okada, if his, like I said earlier, what if his time in AEW was just to goof around with Orange Cassidy? That'd be great. He brings Yano with him and they just goof. That'd be, that'd be so amazing. much fun. That'd be, God, that'd be, and he has the balloon. What if he, what if he brings Red Okada? Oh, amazing. Bring some balloons. With balloons. Amazing. Great idea. I would be so into that. Hell yeah. Anyways, anyways, that's going to do it for today. Shouldn't bring a fish to a fist fight. My God, it's a good what line. We, what do we? What have we come to? Thanks everybody for tuning in. We appreciate it. Like Tomorrow, if, I feel like if I'd said yeah. that line, you would have chuckled. No, I wouldn't. Have. I don't know. I like you know. Sometimes I'll give you like a little encouragement laugh. You know, if it's not funny, I'll be like, oh, you know, he's in a good mood. <laughs> no, that would have got you. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.